Hello, and welcome to another episode of my Type 35 build. A high watermark video this one is, as some real progress has started to come along. As you can see, the body has been trimmed compared to how it was when I first got it, and the frame rails have been set into place for the first time, which is pretty exciting. Sitting inside both of them is what's left of the jig that held the frame rails. It was basically a template with blocks fixed on the remaining section as of these outriggers. If the rails fit between the blocks, then the frame was bent to the right shape. The 4x4 wooden spine was used to keep everything straight and will be reused for the installation of the chassis cross members. But for now, the outriggers of the jig were cut off to allow it to sit inside the body and they'll be replaced with new ones to hold the frame square when it's time for the cross members to be welded in. Back to the car though, and more specifically the driver's hood section, which was removed from the body with a four and a half inch cutoff wheel after the scuttle and rockers were marked off. Once the hood was separated, the rocker area of the body was trimmed to allow the front frame rails to pass through them. There's a radius where the cut line turns from vertical to horizontal as the rocker continues forward and in towards the engine compartment and the frame extends straight forward over the rocker. When completed, these exposed sections of the frame will hold the radiator and front suspension and the hood will close down on top of them just like an original Type 35. The frame, though, is being propped up a skosh high right now, so it won't drag on the rockers as work is being done to align the body with the rails themselves, which haven't yet been cut down to their finished length. The geometry of the frame has already been figured out, but it's nice to mock everything up, especially now, so if there's an issue, it can be addressed before the cross members are fully installed and chassis adjustments become much more complicated. You can see on the passenger side how the frame follows the curve of the body smoothly back into the boat tail before terminating at what will be the location of the rearmost cross member. A great example of why to mock everything up is on the driver's side of the body, which is a completely different story than the smooth flowing passenger side. With the driver's side rail touching the boat tail in the rear, you can see that it comes forward from the body and flares out quite considerably in the cockpit area, before returning to its proper shape as it passes into the engine compartment. This asymmetry in the body is a consequence of sitting unmounted for so long with no support, due to the driver's side firewall having never been connected with the left side of the scuttle. So the body was able to relax and into its current shape. Thankfully the fiberglass is flexible enough though that when mounted it'll conform to the curve in the frame just as the passenger side does and it'll end up with a really pretty teardrop shape. It just needs to be coaxed into position a little bit which is to be expected with a body this old. A neat perspective though is looking down the center of the body between the frame rails. While the spine of the jig stands taller than the driveline tunnel wheel, it gives you an idea of what kind of room the cockpit will have as the seating position will be down low between the frame rails. Something of a metaphor, that is. Looking back at what to look forward to.